hello students so again i am with uh, another topic uh, syndrome called as the thoracic outlet syndrome so we are going to discuss this topic and let us understand uh, what is this uh, syndrome actually so the thoracic outlet syndrome was originally coined in the 1956 by R M Peet and uh, if we say in simple terms it is a neurovascular symptoms in the upper extremities due to the pressure on the nerves and the vessels or the neurovascular bundle the arteries veins which is coming out or exiting From, to the upper limb from the thoracic outlet area so as you can see here a uh, rough diagram which i have made this is the neck portion the neck of the human body and this is the arm this is the another arm this is the clavicle manibium sternae sternum the ribs the costal cartilages then you have the pectoralis minor muscle and then you have the the structures that is passing out through this outlet including the uh, brachial plexus the subclavian vein the subclavian artery which further subclavian artery goes and becomes the axillary artery artery and the other arteries of the upper limb so that is why i have circled this area where this condition persists so when you say the outlet outlet means an aperture so if you see the thorax the rib cage it has an upper outlet it is uh, it, this is an outlet where the structures are coming out and it is moving to the upper extremities that is all the all the neurovascular bundle the uh, nerve supply going to the upper limb the arterial supply is going to the upper limb the venous supply is coming back from the upper limb uh, through this subclavian vein so basically this is a uh, compression and uh, uh, due to pressure on the nerves and vessels in the area so it uh, refers to a collection of signs and symptoms that arise as i said from the compression of the neurovascular bundle by various structures in the area and it happens just above the first rib it happens just above the first rib and behind the clavicle within the confined space which you called as the thoracic outlet and this whole syndrome is also known as or synonymously used as cervical rib syndrome scalene anticus syndrome costoclavicular syndrome and pectoralis minor syndrome so again cervical rib that is sometimes uh we have the anomaly of uh, a development of a extra rib a small growth from the transverse process of the c7 vertebra which is very uncommon and found in 1% or 2% of the population that is called the cervical rib and then we have the scalene muscles as scalene anterior and the scalene middle then the costoclavicular that is the clavicle and the ribs the first rib and the pectoralis minor muscles which uh, uh, 
uh, uh, lies in this area. So we can divide the uh, we can divide the uh, uh, syndrome into uh, or you can say there are some distinct terms which you can use so that is the neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome which happens from the brachial brachial plexus compression then you have the venous thoracic outlet syndrome from the subclavian vein compression and third type is the arterial thoracic outlet syndrome that is from the subclavian artery so you can see the yellow color here designates all the neurovascular bundle the brachial plexus the red is the artery and the blue is the vein now in these three types as I said the neurogenic is the most common and it is found in 95% of the population or the cases which have this type of thoracic outlet syndrome then in the venous it is around 3 to 4 percent and the arterial is 1 to 2 percent of the population as I said the first one that is the neurogenic uh, thoracic outlet syndrome is the most common one and it because it is because of the compression of the brachial plexus leading to you know neck pain numbness and tingling in the upper extremity and the fingers and uh, the other one that is the venous because which happens because of the subclavian vein compression there you can find symptoms like pain cyanosis okay and uh, swelling of the arm and the arterial one that is resulting from the compression of subclavian artery we can go find symptoms like pain pallor coldness feeble pulse or the pulse is weak in the affected arm during overhead activities also we have uh, a new classification that is uh, one is known as the uncomplicated thoracic outlet syndrome that is uh, the disputed thoracic outlet syndrome non-specific uh, TOS or common TOS the uncomplicated, uncomplicated uh, TOS form should be divided in the is divided in predominant neurogenic predominant arterial and predominant venous types and the other classification according to this new classification is the complicated form that is the true TOS thoracic outlet syndrome according to this new classification the uncomplicated form is the most common and most undiagnosed or misdiagnosed the uncomplicated form can present with can be present with mild to severe pain positional parasthesias as the only symptom that is in certain positions you feel a numbness or tingling and uh, there will be no atrophy of the hand muscles and the symptoms are frequently intermittent and oscillating the complicated form that is the other form is easy to diagnose but it is diagnosed very late and the symptoms and signs are slowly progressive unilateral atrophic weakness of the intrinsic hand muscles that is the weakness of the intrinsic hand muscles and sensory abnormalities develop that is in the area of C8 to T1 distribution mainly in the neurogenic type 
then you have the non positional ischemia of the fingers and hands thrombosis embolism of the arteries of the upper extremities subclavian aneurysm cerebral embolism which are the symptoms of arterial thoracic outlet syndrome and uh, uh, last uh, type is the venous thrombosis of the subclavian veins axillary veins and uh, which are the symptoms of the venous type so these are all in the complicated form which is easy to diagnose pain and paresthesia of the, of the upper ex extremities are common in all the three types the shoulder the neck chest pain facial pain occipital headaches are sometimes ignored or overlooked in the predominant neurogenic type so it should be, all these factors should be considered and can be present both in the uncomplicated or complicated forms so if we go to if we see the epidemiology of this condition age is uh, like around 20 to 50 years of age it is seen and the sex is female to male ratio is 3 is to 1 female to male is 3 is to 1 and there is no racial predilection that is no uh, racial yeah, it can happen to any uh, person and uh, as i said the neurogenic is the most common 95% venous around 3 to 4 and arterial is around 1 to 2% now if you see the causes it may be due to trauma it may be due to some pre existing pathologies like tumors or as i said presence of a cervical rib which is a uh, abnormal growth or an anomaly and the investigations that uh, which we use in this case or in this condition mainly is uh, mainly are the duplex sonography the mri x ray electro diagnostic testing is done for confirmation and the mild symptoms should be or can be treated with pain medications and physical therapy but uh, in severe cases surgical resection of the causative causative structures might become necessary in the case of progressive neurologic dysfunction or when there is an acute vascular insufficiency so now let us uh, briefly brush up the anatomy or uh, let us see the relevant anatomy in this case so uh, if we see uh, the anatomy the thoracic outlet is bounded by uh, bony structures of the spinal column then you have the first rib and you have the sternum the clavicle and the compro compromise of the neurovascular bundle that traverse the thoracic outlet uh, uh, area occurs in three distinctive spaces so we can divide into three distinctive spaces and that spaces uh, are namely first is the scalene triangle the scalene triangle then you have the costoclavicular space costoclavicular space and then you have the pectoralis minor space pectoralis minor space so now let us see each of the space 
into a little bit of details now first as i said the scalene triangle is the space most commonly involved in the tos or thoracic outlet syndrome and it is the most common site it is also the most common site of the brachial plexus compression the scalene uh, triangle space is the anterior scalene muscle the anterior scalene muscle the middle scalene muscle and the superior border of the first rib all these creates this triangle so the anterior scalene muscles which originates from the transverse process processes of the from the third to the sixth cervical vertebra c3 to c6 and comes and inserts on the inner and the superior surfaces of the first rib first rib it forms the anterior boundary of the triangle and the middle scalene muscle the middle scalene muscle which arises again from the transverse processes of the second to the seventh cervical vertebra c2 to c7 originates and comes and inserts broadly onto the posterior aspects of the first rib it forms the posterior wall of the triangle and the superior border of the first rib forms the base of the scalene triangle so the anterior muscle the anterior uh, uh, wall then the middle muscle middle scalene muscle that is the uh, posterior wall and the superior border of the first rib becomes the base of the scalene triangle so this is the scalene triangle which we have discussed next triangle is okay before going to the next triangle next space uh, again i want to uh, space mana stress again i want to stress that the trunks of the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery actually this artery here is a little little uh, drawing um, you can say little bit of error this artery comes in between this triangle that is through this triangle so the trunks of the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery passes between the anterior and the middle scalene muscles that is through the triangle and the subclavian vein it Uh, the course is anterior medial to the scalene triangle so it is out of the triangle and anterior medial to the triangle next space is the costoclavicular space now this space consists of the area between the first rib and the first rib and the clavicle so again the brachial plexus the subclavian artery and the uh, subclavian vein pass through this space and the subclavian vein is most likely to be compressed at this site so the costoclavicular costo means rib clavicle so the area between the first rib and the clavicle and here the most common structure to be compressed is the subclavian vein the third area or the space is the pectoralis minor space or the pect minor space so this space is bounded by the pectoralis minor muscle anteriorly and the chest wall posteriorly although this space is not considered technically as a part of the thoracic outlet area because it is not in this area but 
the brachial plexus, the subclavian artery, the subclavian vein, they pass through the pectoralis minor space and exit towards to the upper arm. So, compression of the neurovascular structures within the pectoralis minor space may be nearly as common as the compression within the scalene triangle. So, the compression of this bundle or the artery or vein can result from a combination of as we said now developmental abnormalities, injuries, trauma, physical activities that uh, predispose to neurovascular compression and the variants in the thoracic outlet anatomy can be both congenital and acquired and are common uh, including primary variations in bony and muscular anatomy. So, next is the compression of the subclavian vessels and the lower trunk. Now, this can happen because of physical trauma like example hyperextension neck injuries, hyperextension of the neck injuries that can uh, result in physical trauma and compress the structures. Repetitive motion like repetitive motion of the arm in the abducted and externally rotated shoulder. Okay, so the repetitive motion of the uh, uh, rotated so, uh, externally rotated shoulder or the arm is seen in certain activities and sports like tennis, when you play baseball, swimming, uh, repetitive throwing, overhead throwing activities, or sometimes carrying heavy objects overhead. Overhead. Bone and soft tissue structural abnormalities also results as I said the uh, anomalous uh, the anomalous development of cervical rib the collar bone fracture exotosis of the first rib sometimes the uh, collar bone is fractured and it compresses the first rib or the collar bone is compressed towards the first rib in other conditions sometimes the first rib is brought up in certain activities like breathing abnormalities where a person is having a breathing problem or maybe a respiratory problem or any other conditions like COPD or other cases when the breathing is uh, is loaded and the a uh, person uses the um, uh, accessory muscles in breathing that time this uh, first rib is brought closer to the sternum uh, this one uh, this clavicle and it can also compress and uh, soft tissue abnormalities like uh, hypertrophied muscles in the pectoralis minor seen in the athletes and heavy weight lifters uh, bulky muscles compressing the structures the pectoralis minor measure are very much bulky and developed in heavy weight lifters then sometimes in poor posture or slouch posture or maybe in uh, upper cross syndrome when the shoulders are rounded or maybe when the person is obese and other conditions like hematoma certain tumors as I told you as like the pancoast tumor present here can be some of the causes. So here I am trying to show you the diagram or the picture, a colorful picture of the whole structures which I have drawn there and see the thoracic outlet, the scalene medius anterior muscle, the clavicle, the first rib, the scapula coracoid process, the pectoralis minor muscle and the nerves, the artery, the vein, the neuromuscular bundle, the brachial plexus, the subclavian artery in the red and the blue is the subclavian vein. This is a area where these 
structures the bundle exits and it continues or enters to the uh, upper extremity so this is a very uh, the prone area where uh, this kind of uh, condition can exist here again I am trying to show you the three spaces which we have uh, discussed the first is the scalene triangle you see the scalene anterior the scalene middle muscle and the superior border of the first rib it forms the triangle and all the structures the neurovascular bundle mainly coming out of this area and the neurogenic type of thoracic outlet syndrome is the common one in the scalene triangle now the other diagram you see the costoclavicular space that is costo means rib and the clavicle and see the space in between them again here also the artery the vein and the uh, brachial plexus the neurovascular bundle is exiting continuing from here and lastly the third space the pectoralis minor space that is all the structures are passing beneath the pectoralis minor muscle and continuing to the upper extremity in this following diagram i am trying to show you the cervical rib that is an extra growth or an anomalous growth from the transverse process of the c7 and the cervical rib adheres to the first thoracic rib by dense fibrous band and this is found in uh, one or two percent of the population and this is an important factor in uh, contributing to this thoracic outlet syndrome these are some of the x-rays where in the x-ray you can see the white arrow marks which is indicating the presence of the extra rib that is the cervical rib oh, sorry that is the huh, that is the cervical rib so uh, <clears throat> the arterial the arterial uh, thoracic outlet syndrome can also uh, the symptoms can be like the fatigue weakness coldness upper limb claudication thrombosis parasthesia sometimes gangrene also and also a phenomena called Reynolds phenomena due to thrombosis with distal embolization and uh, in order to confirm this syndrome we have some clinical tests or provocating tests which is I am going to uh, demonstrate in my uh, part 2 video of this lecture and uh, also uh, I will discuss about the treatment part and the uh, treatment uh, if you see the non-operative treatments it is uh, basically posture improving exercises to improve the posture to improve to uh, release the tight structures stretching breathing exercises to avoid the aggravating activities which activities uh, exaggerates or increases the symptoms to avoid uh, repetitive upper extremity mechanical work and muscular trauma and uh, also analgesics muscle relaxants and uh, sometimes antidepressants also and also physiotherapy plays a very important role in uh, dealing this particular problem and the surgical treatment mainly 
now we can see FRRS that is the first rib resection and anterior scalenectomy the first rib resection is the complete resection of the first rib and it results in good outcomes anterior scalenectomy the anterior and the middle scalene muscles are resected cervical rib resection if present transaxillary approach or supraclavicular approach if any if an aneurysm is present then the patient may require an arterial reconstruction in addition to the frrs the frrs stands for first rib resection and anterior scalenectomy for vascular thoracic outlet syndrome and um, uh, it is uh, all patients with uh, an arterial thoracic outlet syndrome will need full anticoagulation and varying degrees of surgical intervention intervention severe ischemia usually requires uh, when there is a severe ischemia it usually requires surgical embolectomy that is with or without uh, intraoperative thrombolysis in conjunction with thoracic outlet decompression as i said physical therapy also plays a very important component for these kind of patients and the, and the stretching and other exercises there are few exercises which we can also do at home in uh, stretching the tight structures mainly the pectoralis minor muscle or the mobilization of the first rib uh, tight structures releasing tight structures so this is about the thoracic outlet syndrome in this uh, video and lecture so the as i said in the next video i will try to demonstrate a few of the tests provo provo uh, provocating tests and uh, any doubt any suggestions any confusions or doubts please uh, discuss and uh, please come forward with your doubts in the google classroom and the whatsapp group so till the next video thank you bye bye